Okay, here is warm up 10.1. Um, all right, so we're going to find the measure of each arc here. So, first, I'm going to start with arc QRS. So, arc QRS, I'm starting at Q, I'm going to end at S, but I have to go past R on my way to S. So, that tells me, okay, I'm dealing with this arc. Okay, so just to color code it there, there's QRS. So, this, um, I've got the 42 degree slice, but what about this slice? Well, the key here is that that dot tells me that this is the center of the circle and so that means that this cord goes through the that's a diameter which means it cuts the circle exactly in half which means I'm dealing with 180 degrees right so this part then is 180 degrees the whole piece there it's the same as the, the measure of the central angle, right? That central angle then would be 180 degrees, okay? Now TS, so TS is over here. So let's see what we can do with that. Well, so again, I've got another diameter here that's gonna help me because I know all of, all of this together is 180, okay? So now I can find the, the, I'm really looking for, I'll call this X here. That's going to be the measure of, of arc TS, right? So now I know all three of these things are going to add up to um, 180. So here, I'll do a little calculation over here. X plus 64 degrees plus 42 degrees will equal 180 degrees. Okay, I'll combine those two into 106. Okay, and then I'll subtract 106 from both sides. And that's going to give me 74 degrees. Okay, so then just to color code this, that's the, this green one here. That one is going to be 74 degrees. Okay, maybe I'll put that in the picture too. Might help on the next one. Let's see. All right, TPS. So TPS. I'm running out of colors here, but I think I got one more. T, P, S. I'm going to start at T. I'm going to go past P on my way to S. So this is everything but that green um, piece, right? So the whole circle is 360 degrees. So I'm just going to take 360 degrees and cut out the 74 degree slice. Okay, so this would give this, this is this one. Okay. So that's going to be put me a little bit under 300 degrees, 296 degrees. No, um, 286, sorry, excuse me, degrees. All right, um, okay, and then PQ. So PQ is this slice in here. Yeah, I'm out of different colors, so I'll just use this. That's that piece, okay. And what I can do is use this diameter again. So this whole diameter is 180 degrees. So if I call this Y here, I can say Y plus 64 plus 74 is going to equal 180. Okay. And then zoom out a little bit so I don't go off screen. All right, I combine the 64 and the 74 to 138. And then I'll subtract 138. And that's going to be 42 then. Okay, so that's the measure of that arc then. That's that piece up here is 42 degrees. Okay, all right. Next up, um, we're going to find the measure of each arc here. So we've got uh, university, um, Clarkson University, and we've got the different majors that people are taking. So we're going to start with the um, measure of arc AB. So arc AB, all right, so we're dealing with this. So the common mistake here is to say, oh, 20%, so this is 20 degrees. Oops, 
It's not 20 degrees. It's not 20 degrees because it's 20% of the whole circle, but the whole circle is not 100 degrees, right? If the whole circle is 100 degrees, yeah, it would be 20 degrees, 20% 20 of 100. But this is going to be 20% of, um, of 360 degrees, okay? And there are many different ways that you can find 20% of 360 degrees. With a calculator, you can just do this. 0.20 is the decimal version of 20%, right? So um, I can just do 0.20 times 360. That's going to give me 72. If I can get the glare off that, there it is. Okay. So this is 72 degrees, not 20 degrees. All right. And then B, C, D. So I'm starting at B, going past C on my way to D. That's this. So uh, first off, I need to figure out how much percent. Well, it's 30 plus 35, so this would be 65% altogether in, in that slice, right? So um, this is going to be 65% of 360 then, of 360 degrees. So 0 0.65 times 360, let's see. And that puts me at 234. Okay. All right. And then let's factor this trinomial. So um, first thing I want to do is look for a common factor. But there is no common factor. And I still have to deal with this 2. So um, one way to do this is with a modified diamond problem. So I'm going to take the 2 and multiply it by the 2 at the end there. I'm going to change this trinomial so that it reads as x squared plus 5x plus 4. Right? So I moved that 2 to the end, multiplied it by the end piece. Now this piece I can factor with a diamond problem. So I put the 5 on top and the 4 on bottom. I'm looking for two numbers that add to 5 and multiply to 4. So if you play around with the different options, that's my winning combo, right? 1 times 4 is 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. So that's what is going to go at the end of these parentheses. Okay, and here's another tricky bit. That's not my final answer. If I multiply these together, that'll give me this trinomial, not the original that begins with the 2x squared. So since I changed the trinomial, I've got to change my answer. So what I'm going to do is divide the number parts. So in the beginning, I multiplied by 2. So now I'm going to divide just the number parts by 2, like this. Okay, And you want to reduce these as much as you can. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so that simplifies to x plus 2. But 1 half, I can't reduce any further. So if you have a fraction that you can't reduce, take the denominator and pull it out in front of the x. Then the 1 falls to the ground there. And then this is my final answer. And you can always test it out by foiling it, multiplying it back together, should get you to 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. Okay, That's the end of the warm-up, and I'll see you next time.